Well, I think it's uh, it was definitely you know moving to the right direction yesterday in terms of restoring the confidence. Uh, I think as I lighted before, the trade-off of this is obviously uh, increasing more as of because you don't want to save all of the weakest uh, players uh, in such markets. But you know that news aside, there are still a lot of uh, question marks regarding the state of the uh, U.S. financial system. Obviously, the big question mark is on commercial real estate. I think that was the main stress last week, including in Europe with Deutsche Bank. So as long as we have, let's say, the interest rate cycle starting to hit the weakest links of the economy, obviously, banks are the forefront of this, and they might continue to suffer from that kind of event. So let's say watch out, very importantly, commercial real estate, which is currently uh, one of the weakest links of the uh, U.S. economy. Is it, is it possible to save the U.S. banking system and continue to hike interest rates to tackle inflation? I, I know that the Fed has looked at various lending lines that it can offer up to the banks to effectively sustain liquidity and somehow uh, calm the markets. Uh, and yet, even as uh, they hike interest rates, they are doing damage to those portfolios of treasury bonds and other assets that suffer duration risk? Well, this is the trade-off uh, that the Fed is trying to install. So on one hand, uh, they are tackling, uh, let's say, the weakness of the US financial system by providing ample liquidity. Some are even naming it self-QE. And on the other hand, they are hiking rates uh, for the rest. So it's basically, you know, QE for the markets and quantitative tightening for all of the orders. It's, you know, on paper, that looks something which is, let's say, doable, feasible. But in reality, that's not that easy because when you're hiking rates, you are making the banks with exposure to long duration assets, you know, weaker. And on the other hand, by providing ample liquidity to the system, this is not deflationary, this is inflationary. So you're putting more pressure in terms of hiking interest rates. So this kind of, let's say, very shaky balance between, let's say, QE for the markets and quantitative tightening for the rest uh, is obviously you know, creating some risk you know, down the line. Uh, Charles-Henri, nice to see you today. So look, can we put to bed now the nonsense that I keep hearing at the start of every single rate hiking cycle, that the great expansion of net interest margins means that banks will make hay and skip into the sunshine with the joy of expanded rate offerings? Or actually, is it the fact that more delinquencies, worse holdings of assets that they uh, have got stuck on their books against long-term liabilities and actually means that it's not the golden scenario when we see rates hiked? Or actually, is there something specifically wrong with certain banks that means from others they can make hay? This is exactly what has been happening over the last two weeks. In a matter of a few days, we have moved from higher interest rates is good for net interest margin for the banks to Higher interest rates has put at risk, you know, a big chunk of the economy and banks, because they're the full front of that, are going to pay the price. And also there is this kind of, let's say, very, let's say, difficult, vicious cycle currently in the U.S. where the more the Fed is hiking rates, the higher in the interest rates on money market funds and the more deposit outflows we are seeing moving from banks to money market funds. So for the time being, let's say the, hiking, the rate hike in the U.S., proves to be self-defeating for the weakest banks. So yes, indeed, you're right. Let's say we have moved a lot. Let's say in terms of interest rates is positive for banks to interest rates currently is a negative for banks. Yeah.